السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أمسينا وأمسى الملك لله والحمد لله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير رب أسألك خير ما في هذه الليلة وخير ما بعدها رب أعوذ بك من شر ما في هذه الليلة ومن شر ما بعدها رب أعوذ بك من الكسل والسوء الكبر رب أعوذ بك من عذاب في النار ومن عذاب في القبر بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد رسول الله وآله وأصحابه ومن والاه Allah maftah masami'a qulubina li dhikrik Ya Allah, please open the hearing channels of our hearts to your dhikr, to that which reminds us of you Allah mawfiqna li siyami ramadana wa qiyamihi imanan wa ahtisaba Allah mawfiqna li siyami ramadana wa qiyamihi imanan wa ahtisaba Allah mawfiqna li siyami ramadana wa qiyamihi La ilaha illa ant. We continue in the course of the early ayat verses from the Quran from Surah Al Baqarah in the context of the ayah and what came after it concerning the <coughs> concept of Khilafah on earth as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigns it to the human being and informs the angels, the malaika in that early genesis of human history informed the malaika, the angels that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to set, is going to make, put on earth a khalifa. And we're speaking about that concept of khilafa. And I remind you and myself that in a sense and in essence the Khilafah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the human beings is when we in our character, in our inner image, in our internal traits and characteristics and akhlaq and sifat, we represent the divine sifat and attributes at our possible best human potential. Keep in mind, of course, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes, his names are infinite in the scope of their perfection and in the scope of that perfection in their beauty and in their majesty. When Allah Azzawajal is Rahim at the infinite level, we must strive in order to represent him to be Ruhama, to be compassionate and merciful and lovingly merciful in the best possible human level to be representatives, to be khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it goes with basically almost all of the attributes and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in that context that Allah azza wa jalla is telling us what he's telling us until we got to the ayat which we are also expounding upon when Allah azza wa jalla says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين الذين يظنون أنهم ملاق ربهم وأنهم إليه راجعون and as Allah Azza wa Jal informs us and uh, counsels us to help ourselves and to seek refuge and help and support in this life in order that we are not swayed by shaitan in order that our hearts are not so sick and so arrogant, for example, as to not recognize the truth when we see it and not recognize falsehood when we see it. Or we recognize those but we still choose not to follow what is right. Allah says, help yourselves. Against that with sabr and salah, patience and prayer and salah. And sabr is also, as we mentioned, sawm, fasting. 
the practice of fasting since you are fasting the month of Ramadan Alhamdulillah or we ought to know that as Allah mentions sabr which is also sawm is a means by which we liberate our hearts and we purge our nufus and therefore our hearts would be able to see spiritually clearly and then we follow with clarity the truth and we keep away with clarity from falsehood. It is in that context again that Allah Azza wa Jal informs us about that, about uh, uh, the importance of salah as well as another means of helping ourselves. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah. And we started talking about that and we were last night talking about the khushu' in salah. Being focused and concentrated and being still and tranquil and being balanced and stable inside of me and still when I am in salah. And we mentioned from Surah Al-Mu'minun which we have already recited in our taraweeh that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who in their salah are in khushu'ah. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ And we were talking about that. And I hope you remembered what we mentioned. And so, salah without khushu'ah is lifeless. Salah without khushu'ah is soulless, is spiritless. Salah without the qalb involved in salah is a salah that has no haqiqah, no reality. It's a salah that may not even be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from us. Because Allah azza wa jal, as he offers us the audience of standing in front of him, and the opportunity to stand in front of the Divine subhanahu wa ta'ala, he looks at our hearts. That's what represents the reality of the human being. What we are in our qulub is what represents our reality. Not the way we look like externally. Not the way we would stand physically. But the way we look like internally. That's what Allah looks at. In Allah la yanzuru. إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَأَشْكَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that Allah does not look at your shapes and forms and external appearances but He looks subhanahu wa ta'ala at your hearts and consequently your comportment, your deeds and your words that come from your hearts and which hearts do they emanate from. And thus Khushu'a in salah is the khushu'a of the qulub, that the qalb is present. The qalb is disconnected, or at least we strive in takhshu'a to disconnect our thoughts and feelings and internal energies from anything other than our awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal, awareness of His watchfulness over us, awareness of an attribute, for example, when you are in salah, you might be pondering an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal, just that one, and you are involved with that, that keeps you connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or other more of His attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we disconnect from anything else, we screen what goes into our qulub and what comes out of our qulub. In salah, in khushu' khushu' meaning stillness, meaning inside of me there is no turbulence, there is stillness, because I am not engaged internally towards anything of the created realm. It's like I don't see anything. The more we see objects, the more we have signals to process. The more it is very busy, isn't it? And the more I allow inside of my heart and my thoughts and my feelings, the more, the busier I am, the restless I am. And that's antithetical, it's opposite to khushu'a. Stillness means disengaging from other, anything created than 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that awareness. And if I don't have that, as he said, Rasulullah sallallahu taught us that in order to achieve a character, we have to work at it. What did we learn last night? What did we say of what he taught us? إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ as he said sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa In other words, if you want to be a alim, if you want to have ilm, if you want to have the character of a alim, a person who knows in the right way, then you have to strive to know. You have to work hard to know. بِالتَّعَلُّمْ عَلَى وَزْنِ التَّفَعُلْ You strive to do that. And so he said also, وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ And that... Uh, kindness or forbearance responding to the abuses of others when you are strong and able with composure and wisdom and just ease and you, you, let, you let go you know, that, that's forbearance that hilm, he said in order to be halim, you have to strive to be halim bittahallum you make yourself that way, you're not that way I'm not that way but I fake it until I make it I continue to strive to be that way. It's difficult, but I strive to be that way. So when I do that, then I, be, I become, bi'idhnillah, <coughs> halim, forbearing. And then he said, giving examples, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ And again, and the one who strives and works hard to be patient, then Allah will make him patient, will make her patient. وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ الله. So you can't say, I cannot say as a Muslim, inshallah as a mu'min, I cannot say, well I don't have sabr, that's me. True, I don't have sabr, that might be me. But that's not where I stop. I should strive to have sabr. When I fumble, I repent to Allah Azza wa Jalla, I ask for forgiveness, those whom I hurt, and I try again. And again, to be patient and to learn how to do that through the proper tazkiyah processes, the tazkiyah of our nufus. And so, I say, in order to attain khushu' in salah, and khushu' is a state, as we said, of the, of the heart of stillness and tranquility, then, إنما الخشوع, I would say, إنما الخشوع بالتخشوع, similarly, Rasulullah intended to teach us through two or three examples and then we extend that and we extrapolate to other situations. So in the situation of khushu'ah, I should, in order to attain khushu'ah, from what he said, I should do what? Strive to be in khushu'ah. I should want that, want that, desire that, and strive to be in khushu'a. How do I strive to be in khushu'a? We mentioned a few things last night. First, remove audible distractions. And, what else? Visual distractions. Because signals that I receive through my seeing and my hearing, they will enter into my heart. They will form energy and I will store them. And that's what comes to disturb me and distract me. So, in order to work on khushu' for khushu', I should not be performing salah anywhere with where there are audible distractions and visual distractions. That's why we should build our masajid and we should maintain our masajid in such a way as to help preserve this aspect in our salawat. We do not have visual distractions and we do not have audible distractions of any kind, of any sort, whether it is nowadays your iPhones or these, these super computers that you put in your pockets or anything else. That is, if used improperly and used in the musalla, in the masjid, that contributes to distracting the person's mind and thoughts and feelings and heart those who seek to be in khushu' and we must all seek to be in khushu' as we said, salah without khushu' is life 
this soul this in addition to that we are inside salah what we are outside salah i am in salah what i am outside salah meaning if outside of my salah i'm a person who is internally agitated busy inside of some sort I have so many so many yani, inputs inside of my heart and signals from because of the way I use my eyes and ears when I walk outside I see and all of that is information all of that are signals and that's going to be stored I go out, where do I go? What do I hear? What do I listen to? All of that is going to be stored. What I say, how I act and react to challenges and opportunities, all of that is going to be stored inside of me as energy. So when I come to Salah, I say Allahu Akbar, and we'll talk about Allahu Akbar in a moment, what we stored is triggered by shaitan because it's there to be replayed. To be replayed. So I am in Salah, what I am outside of Salah. What happens in Salah is because of what I am outside of Salah. So in order, if I care for Salah and, and, I, and I understand the primacy and the importance of Salah for me as a human being in my journey in life towards the hereafter if I understand the importance of Salah and we mentioned few things about what Rasulullah said about Salah yesterday as well if I understand that then I should part of my concern and serious concern in my life is how I use my senses when I go out at home when I'm outside of Salah in any circumstance how am I using the means by which I receive information and energy and it is stored in, our, in my qalb when I control that and those who do that of the ulama, awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal, their salah is a qurrat ayn. That's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ And we spoke about qurrat ayn last night, and that beautiful meaning that it has of qarar, and stillness, and peace, and serenity, and tranquility inside of us. Salah will become that serenity and tranquility with constancy, qarar, qarira. If our qulub are clean, and my qalb and yours will not be clean if I use my eyes improperly, and my ears improperly. In the sam'a, wal basara, wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula. Allah says, that we are to be held accountable for the way we use our eyesight and for the way we use our hearings and for the way we use our, he said thirdly, our hearts. Because why did in this order, sam'u wal basar wal fu'ad? Al fu'ad is involved when we receive information, we observe information through seeing and through hearing. And then we process inside and we analyze inside. Isn't that what we do? In the laboratory, even in the laboratory, what do you do? You look at observables. You have to have observables. Things you see and you hear. And then you analyze. With what do you analyze? With your mind. With your inner, inner system. So, because my eyes and my ears feed into my heart they feed into my heart and my heart cannot be at peace if I use my 
eyes and my ears, for example, and then my tongue and my touch and so on, if I use them in ways that are improper, in ways that are immoral, in ways that are criminal, in ways that are ugly, in ways that are sinful, all of that comes to haunt me in my salah. And by the way, and in my dreams, and in my dreams, we dream the way we are. The quality of our dreams is in a sense expressive of the personality I am. The dreams are generally expressions of the way we live. Especially the nafsani, nafsani dreams. Abraf wa Those are what we are inside. A person who is spiritually lofty in nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal, his or her dream are different in general. And so they come and haunt me in my dreams and they come and haunt me in my salah. So in order to be khashi in salah, which is much more important, I have to be focused and very careful and mindful about how I live outside of salah, my dear brothers and sisters. And this, of course, you realize, this is an, an, an endeavor of a lifetime. And therefore you can imagine that salah is, a, is, a, is an evolutionary process. Meaning, it takes time for my qalb to reach if I take that process seriously, it might take time for my heart to finally be at rest and be in khushu'ah. Inside salah and outside salah. That's one, one of the salihun, one of the early predecessors of our salaf, rahimahumullah ta'ala, as related in the seer of these and the biographies of these great men and women of our deen. He said, كَابَتُ كَابَتُ الصَّلَاةَ وَكَابَتُ نَفْسِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ عِشْرِينَ سَنَةِ عِشْرِينَ سَنَةِ وَتَمَتَّعْتُ بِهَا عِشْرِينَ سَنَةِ He said the first 20 years that is of his conscious, religious, spiritual, aware life I struggled for 20 years in my salah. And then after that, I have been in delight in my salah. I think it was Utbah al-Ghulam, rahimahullah ta'ala. To attain khushu' in salah. Salah, my dear brothers and sisters, must never, never be undermined. It's never enough, it's never enough to remind ourselves about our salah. The quality of our salah needs a lot of improvement. It needs a lot of change. We need to always be mindful of that. Because it is the means by which we also connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-salatu silah. As-salatu Silah, as the word salah um, invokes the meaning of silah, and silah means what? Connection. Silah, connection. In salah, we are to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spiritually, with our qulub, with our souls, to strive to get to that level, to strive to get to that level. That's why, again, when we say Allahu Akbar, Takbiratul Ihram, at least we strive to understand and feel the meaning of Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater, greater, Akbar. Then, and it's left open. It's an open ended interval. Akbar. Then what? It depends how I come to Salah. If I come to Salah very happy and very powerful, Allah is greater than my happiness and my power. If I come to Salah very sad and very afraid, 
Allah is greater than sadness and than fear. If I come to Salah agitated and anxious, Allah is greater than my anxiety and my agitation. I come to that. If I come to Salah and I'm oppressed, Allah is greater than my oppressor and than oppression. If I come to Salah and I have oppressed someone, Allah is greater than me and my oppression of someone. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar greater than any state or condition in which I am or the world around me is. Allahu Akbar. And that's liberation. That the first statement is Takbiratul Ihram. It liberates me. I enter liberated from the attachments and the dimensions of the created world. Allahu Akbar. It's a statement of liberty. I let go of everything created. I'm at work and I hear Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than my work. Yes. Work is needed or necessary, but Allah is greater than my work and my need. And at that moment, Salah is more important. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And then I am in Qiyam. Qiyam, standing, standing, signifies in my Salah, Al-Khidmah. You know, when someone is serving somebody, when you go to restaurants, and may Allah Azza wa Jal be exalted from analogies, you know, your host is always standing to serve you. No, I'm here to serve. Standing. What, what can I do, sir? What can I do, madam? Standing to serve you. And as I, as I said, may Allah be exalted from analogies. My standing in salah, qiyami fi salah, is an expression of my khidmah for Allah Azza wa Jal. My servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. I am here, Ya Allah. My life is for you. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen la sharika la I, my life, my living as I stand in salah that's what I am meaning I stand in salah to serve Allah Azza wa my qalb is involved in that meaning of khidma to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with that feeling I stand with that humility, I stand. With that servitude, I stand in salah. And if I am in that hal, how can I be turning right or left? How can I put, put my hands in my pocket and even draw my your iPhones? Could you please put them in your pockets? Don't put them outside in salah. Don't touch them. Anything I do, in moving my senses, it's a sign of lack of reverence for that moment I have with Allah Azza wa Jal. Can I not, for a few minutes, be reserved emotionally and physically for Allah alone? Can I not? إِلَىٰ أَيْنَ يَا عَبْدِ إِلَىٰ خَيْرٍ مِنِّي As Allah would say when one of us turns his or her gaze. Allah would say, in a course of a hadith that teaches, Allah would say, O oh my servant, O oh my abd, where to? Somewhere better than me? Where to? Somewhere better than me? And then why when we finish salah, we're in a hurry? Get up and leave. We're in a hurry to go where? Where? Somewhere better than Allah? Can I not for my own sake, as we learn more inshaAllah ta'ala, for my own sake, can I not give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some quality time? Can I not? Why am I in a hurry to go back to anything else and everything else? Why? What's happening? Salah. حافظوا على الصلوات 
الصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون May I and you be of those who guard our salah with very, 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 very jealous about our salah. May we appreciate, Ya Rabb, and forgive us, forgive us, for we don't know. Most of us don't know. Forgive us for that moment that you gave us, and yet we seek to go somewhere else in our minds and in our hearts. Please forgive us, Ya Rabb. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. Don't treat us the way you would treat others justly. Treat us, please, as ignorant fools who don't know yet. Please teach us so that we stand in front of you in the way you deserve and in the way we learn and we change. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه الميامين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته